Hello there folks and welcome back. Today I have the ultimate battle between the Vortex Razor HD Gen 2 scope versus the Razer HD Gen 3 scope that just came out. So let's see which one holds up better. All right, so the first test was testing the durability of the coating on these scopes. And I gotta say, the hard anodized finish on these must be top notch because I do not see a single abrasion, scratch, or chip in the coating whatsoever. Let's take a look through them real quick. Okay, no looseness in the glass there, no cracks or chips in the glass. I gotta say, the coating on these is excellent, definitely better than even the cheaper lower end Vortexes for sure. That was impressive. All right, so now that we've had a little fun testing the durability of these scopes, let's take a look at some of their physical characteristic differences. Well, you can just tell right off the bat that the Gen 2 comes in a 4.5 to 27 by 56 variable power, where the Gen 3 at this time comes in a uh, 6 to 36 variable power by 56 objective scope. So basically one has a 4.5 to 27 and one is 6 to 36 power. Both feature a 34 millimeter main tube. And now that we've taken a simple look at that, let's start with the Gen 2 going over some of the basic specs, fit and feel. So we have this Gen 2 scope right here. This is the Vortex Razor HD. Comes with a nice fast focus eyepiece has some knurling in the aluminum uh, knob here for the fast focus eyepiece, has a plus and minus hash on the scope body, um, has your magnification ring, very smooth, heavy knurling aluminum, has some numeric values for the power, little dot on the scope body there to show you what power you're on. There's no hiccups, grind or creep, it's quite stiff. You come forward, it's got that nice 34 millimeter main tube, comes with about 113.5 minutes of elevation in the MOA version, so plenty enough at, uh, elevation adjustment for long range and ELR shooting. And on the left side, you have a very nice pull out, heavily knurled aluminum knob, with on off settings for your illumination it has all your brightness settings they alternate on off which is really nice because then you can keep it on the illumination setting you want and just turn it on and off instead of having to scroll through all the uh, illumination brightness settings really nice tactile takes a cr2032 battery right here in the side cap then let's go over to the parallax it has a side parallax adjustment aluminum knob heavily knurled easy to grab very smooth and fluid no hiccup grime or creep and uh, very adjustable. I believe it goes all the way down to 32 yards and then all the way up to 500 and infinity. Um, then coming to the top here, you have a very nice elevation turret. It is locking. To unlock it, you pull it up. To lock it, you push it down. Heavily knurled aluminum. The um, MOA version comes with click marks or hash marks, I should say, every quarter MOA with numeric values, every full MOA has 25 minutes of uh, adjustment per rotation. Um, to set the zero stop and the zero, you undo the cap here, remove the turret, reset it, um, and then it has an adjustment inside for setting the zero stop. Super tactile and audible, feels great. Um, no slop in it whatsoever, premium quality. One thing to note is you can turn this really easily back or forth and even though it's a locking turret, it doesn't slip down on you and lock on you when you don't want it to. Then coming over to the right side, you have your windage turret. It's also locking, pull out on it to adjust it. Also, once again, tactile and audible, nice and tight, no slop. The hashes on the scope body mark up or meet up perfectly with the hashes on the turret. Um, it has L designation and R designation for left and right, as well as numeric values and a hash mark every quarter MOA. Um, so very, very nice right there. Of course, we come forward to the 56 millimeter objective. This scope is fully made in Japan. The glass is made in Japan. It has, I believe it's called XR coatings on the lenses for abrasion resistant. It has, um, uh, indexed lenses so they line up appropriately to basically give you that optimal light transmission and excellent image quality. I can tell you right now the glass in this 
is absolutely fantastic. Um, it's 14.4 inches long, weighs about 48.5 ounces, so it's not a light scope. Does come with a sunshade, does come with a lens cloth, some cheesy lens covers. Oh, and it has 48 minutes of maximum windage. Now let's take a look at the Vortex Razer HD Gen 3 6 to 36 variable power by 56 rifle scope. So we come back here and basically the fast focus is almost exactly the same design as the Gen 2 heavily knurled aluminum, although they put hash marks on the actual fast focus eyepiece itself. So you can actually see how far in or out you've gone um, and index that, which is quite nice. Um, then coming forward, you have your magnification ring. The magnification ring on mine is actually a little bit easier. Um, not doesn't take as much force to spin and super smooth easy to turn the knurling isn't quite as deep on it which is something to note um, has numeric values for your magnification so um, which do I for prefer well they're both great then we come forward to this 34 millimeter main tube this one features 120 minutes of elevation so a little bit more elevation adjustment has 52.5 uh, minutes of windage adjustment so a little bit more windage adjustment as well in this gen 3 um, and it has 25 minutes uh, per rotation on the elevation turret of adjustment. So that's the same as the Gen 2, which we'll get back to in just a second. But let's take a look at the left side here. You have a pullout knob with uh, for your illumination with alternating on off, identical to the Gen 2. Um, push that in. It's heavily knurled, made of aluminum, feels exactly the same. You take a CR2032 battery, the same as the Gen 2. Um, the parallax knob on my Gen 3 is just a little bit stiffer than my Gen 2, but it's essentially the same. Um, it's a little bit stiffer, um, but maybe that'll loosen up over time. It does adjust down to a lower, lower yardage though, adjusts down to 10 yards. So if you wanted to technically use this for 22 competition, which you'd be kind of insane to do, you could do this. Um, and then of course it goes up to 500 or excuse me, up to a thousand with markings and then infinity. The other one goes to 500 and then infinity. So uh, it has a little bit more maybe adjustment in the parallax knob on the Gen 3. Then coming forward to the elevation turret. Now this is where things really get interesting. The other one has the L Tech the L Tech Zero Stop. The Gen 3 has the L Tech Plus Zero Stop. And this one, I gotta say, I like better. Um, but there is more radical options, or there was more radical options in the Gen 2, um, but maybe they'll come out with some more in the Gen 3. You have, of course, for MOA, you have markings every quarter MOA, numeric values every one MOA on the elevation turret. The collar at the base of the turret is more beefy on this Gen 3 uh, for whatever reason. Of course, it uh, lines up perfectly with the hash marks on the scope body. Now let's just turn this turret real quick. So auto, audible and tactile, very similar to the Gen 2. In fact, let's go ahead and just try that. I would say the Gen 2 slightly more audible feels just a little bit better in my opinion, actually. The Gen 3 is also just a hint tighter, um, like stiffer to move around, um, but this is awesome. It comes with a tool so you can adjust this dial right here on the top of your elevation and on the top of your windage turret just the same, where you can actually, you actually set the zero, you, do, you undo the set screw on the side collar right here for both the windage and elevation, and then you use this dial to zero your scope. You don't, you turn the whole turret and this allows you to adjust your zero perfectly even in between quarter MOA or uh, mil radian, but there is no clicks or audibleness to it. You just simply turn it to the perfect exact zero, um, which allows you, like I said, to adjust it between what would be quarter MOA hash marks for both the windage and elevation. Once you tighten down that set screw, um, basically you're good to go. It automatically sets your zero stop and it's so slick and so sweet. So I much prefer that uh, over this system on the Gen 2. Coming to your right side, you have of course your windage turret with an L and an R designation for right and left. 
the turret is also la locking. I might have forgot to mention that these lock and unlock the same way, essentially, as the Gen 2, but we'll touch on that in a second. You pull out on the turret, heavily knurled. It is a little bit tighter than the Gen 2, not maybe quite as audible. And I do kind of like the feel of the Gen 2 a little bit better, but I like the zeroing system and everything better on the Gen 3. So you undo that set screw, turn this dial, get that perfect zero, and you're good to go. Now, coming back to these turrets, let's take a look at the Gen 2 again. Let me see if I can kind of get you in frame right here. You're going to pull up on this to unlock it, and you can turn it. Even with a little bit of downward pressure, while you're turning it quickly, like say in a competition, it's not going to auto accidentally go down on you. Take a look at this Gen 3. This is the worst design flaw with the Gen 3. This is the biggest problem with the Gen 3. Pull up on it to unlock it, good. Knurling's not quite as heavy. Turn it, okay, that's good. But watch, I turned down just a little bit of pressure by accident, got some adrenaline running or fatigue, and it wants to slide down and lock while I'm turning it in revolution to dial up or down. That is a huge problem when you're competing or trying to shoot or dial fast. Okay, so it does it with the windage as well, but generally people don't push down or in I should say in while they're dialing windage. So not a huge problem there. But look, wants to lock on me. That, folks, is a huge design flaw with this scope. Both feature, of course, that 56 millimeter objective. This one is also made in Japan with Japanese glass. Comes with the same coatings, essentially. However, the glass is noticeably better in the Gen 3 at low light. So if you go in twilight, you know, early morning or late evening, you look through this scope, you're gonna have a little bit better clarity, um, less, like I, I would say about the same amount of edge distortion um, on the highest powers or on the same power. If I was to put that one on 27 power and this one on 27 power, I'm gonna have the same amount of edge distortion, but I'm gonna have a little bit better clarity. I'm gonna have a little bit better light transmission. I'm gonna have a little bit better contrast. So basically the glass and image quality is better in this Gen 3 for whatever reason. Now, let's come back here. The Gen 3 does come with a sunshade as well, but one thing that sets it apart comes with all the same things, but it comes with more tools for those special Altec Plus turrets. And it also comes with a throw lever, though it does come with a throw lever, the Gen 2 does not. So, we have this scope weighing in at 45.1 ounces. It's 15.3 inches long. So if you are an ELR shooter and you're not gonna quickly be dialing elevation in a rush with adrenaline running, and you want that extra elevation adjustment, you want a little bit better glass quality and more magnification, the Gen 3 is for you most likely. If you're a PRS shooter or a recreational uh, long range shooter, um, things like that, then the Gen 2 is probably the better choice for you. But that is opinion. It's up to you to make the decision. The glass is going to be a little bit better in the Gen 3, um, and you're going to have a little bit better zeroing system, so to speak, um, and a nicer, easier way to set the zero stop. However, the turret on the Gen 2 isn't going to want to shut down on you or um, lock up on you if you're quickly dialing. Both are excellent scopes, both made in Japan from Vortex. So go ahead, do your work research and decide which is best for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, go ahead, like, and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in the comments section.